because you said no. Because remember, children that are enmeshed, they don't know how to receive no as an answer. So he gets, or he or she gets mad and starts accusing you of certain things. Oh, well, you don't love me. You let such and such a person do it, but you can't let me do it. You see, that just turned unhealthy right then. And you have to still stand up and speak up for your home. Or else you're not going to have a home. Another example of this would be um, people who can afford housing. But they choose to do other things with their money. They choose to get their wants instead of their needs. But they come to your house and, you know, what do we call it? Leeches. And they want to leech off of you every single day. Can I this? Can I that? But you know that your light bill has went up since... They have been around you, but you don't know how to speak up because you was taught to feel what others feel. And so because you feel what others feel, you're like, oh, I understand what it's like not to have that. And you start giving away your stuff and not taking care of your own responsibility. And now your life is going to get cut off because you allow them to run your bill up. That is an example of having an unhealthy boundary. What if you tell them no? You finally speak up and say, no, you can't come in here and do that no more. And they get mad and they start trashing your name. That's how you know that is a child that was wounded as a child. They never learned how to receive no as an answer. They didn't realize that no meant... That no means to keep you safe. And sometimes you get in the position where you don't realize that when you speak up and say no and set that boundary of saying no, I mean by saying no, that you are keeping yourself safe. That's what it is. That's what boundaries are to keep us safe where we don't get out here and, you know, get too far out of control where we lose our self-control. When you start to lose your self-control, that's when bad decisions start to come. So saying no is not a bad thing. And accepting when somebody says no is not a bad thing. If you are a person that is is listening and you can't receive when somebody tells you no, then that means that you have a problem. And you need to go back and dig into your life and find out what problems do I have, why I can't accept no. And it's not even your stuff. Immense families, they don't have boundaries, so therefore your house is my house. You know, like they used to say, the uh, uh, Hispanics used to say, Mi casa es su casa. <laughs> well, immense children take it to a whole nother light. Immense parents, they take it to a whole light. Immense parenting, um, you can have your own house and stuff. But because you are their child, they don't see that you are an adult. Like I said, they want you to feel what you, what they feel. If you're married, anything like that. They're going to walk in the house on you. They do not feel like they have to knock on your door. They do not even respect you enough to knock on your door. They just walk straight in and say, I'm in. But by then, they're in. And you're looking like, I'm going to have to start locking my doors. No, you're not. you don't have to start locking your doors. If you ain't been locking your doors, what you need to do is speak up. You need to speak up, set those boundaries, and tell them, hey, this is my house. I'm an adult now. And, you know, that's disrespectful, you walking in here without knocking. I could have been sitting in here naked. Or I could have been sitting in here taking a nap, and you may have scared me, gave me a heart attack or anything. You need to knock and let me know that you're out there. How about you need to call me before you come? You know, you have to set those boundaries because enmeshed parents, they don't understand that you are different from them. They think that you are one. Whatever they feel, then you must be feeling too. That's how they feel. Um, They will not let you have your own set of feelings. It's got to be theirs. They do not. The only feelings that they want you responsible for is theirs. And they don't want you responsible for your own feelings. And that's the part where setting boundaries comes in and helps. It's where you stop feeling responsible for somebody else's feelings. Because you are not responsible. Even when they make you feel like you are, you are not responsible for someone else's feelings. And I have a scripture that's going to back that up. Um, 
Boundaries are set with unconditional love. You teach people how to treat you. And those of them that don't want to treat you the way that you're asking them to, those are the ones sometimes you got to step aside from. You just got to leave them alone. You got to be hey and bye. You got to be how you doing. Keep it short. Do not allow their evil and destructive behavior to consume you to the point where you become depressed, to the point where you become out of control, to the point where you are now setting conditions on love with your children. What do I mean by conditions on, of, on love? Um, if you don't get me that moke and you don't uh, wash these dishes, then you can't go to your prom. Then you can't have this money for your trip. You know, you know there are certain Conditions that you just do not set when it comes down to love. Love should be unconditional, but it's not always condition unconditional. There are parents who only live to love their children with a condition. What can you do for me? That's why it's important to set these boundaries because some parents see you as an object and not as an actual person. You know, some people actually have children and they don't see them as people. They see them as objects. They see them as an uh, extension of themselves. They don't see that you have a separate personality. They don't care if you like the color red and blue. If they like black, then you must like black. You got to like black too. If they like Pepsi, then every time you go to that store, you got to bring them back a Pepsi. Or else... They're going to punish you some type of way. They will make you feel bad and guilty for the blessings that God has given you. Another example of immense families. If they don't like your home, then they're going to make sure that they talk to you long enough that you will not like your home either. And you will be ready to leave. And then as soon as you leave it, they get in it and live like... Like they on heaven, right? <laughs> Start living their life away in your stuff. After they didn't turn you against it. You see how the mind game begins to play. Okay, so let me get to this scripture. Because this scripture is definitely fitting for what I'm talking about. Um, I'm hoping that this does not go off on me like it did last Wednesday. Okay, so we're going to Galatians 6, 1 through 10. Doing good to all. Okay? Don't want to read this whole thing? Yes. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted. You hear? <laughs> Verse 1. The thing about enmeshed families that have no boundaries is that they don't restore one another. They continue to break one another down, and it's not gentle at all. And you have to be careful. If you are the person that's going to break that generational bad behavior, then you have to be careful that you live by the Spirit and that you do not get caught up in the temptations of what they're doing. If they are out here getting money and you know their money ain't good and they're like, oh, well, you better come on board and get some too. No, this money free. You know, don't get caught up in that temptation. You got to watch yourself out here. And this goes for family members, friends, business you know, Satan has co-workers in all these areas of our lives. Um, verse number two, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. So what does this mean to carry each other's burdens? Wait a minute. You just told me to set boundaries. That's what it means. Carry each other's burdens. Keep your boundaries set. You can't do nothing for the internal part of what they're going through. So what you have to do is you have to work externally. You have to be there for them. That don't mean getting all up in their grill and stuff. Maybe you see them feeling bad and you go give an encouraging word. Maybe you know that they do need some food and you take them a plate. 
You know, it doesn't mean give your all. It means just what it says, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Meaning that when you see your brother or your sister falling far down, you go be the light for just, you know, you be that light. You be that person that goes up, and, and especially if they are such a bad person that nobody really wants to deal with them. You go be that light. And sometimes that just takes just listening to what they have to say or, you know, just taking them a bottle of water. You know, do something like of that nature. But don't try to internalize. Don't try to feel what they feel. Have compassion and love. But don't try to feel what they feel because as verse 1 told us to watch yourself or else you'll be tempted to feel that same feeling that they're feeling. And that's not going to be good because you're not, you're, you're not anointed to go through what they're going through. All right? Verse 3, if anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Lord have mercy. They sure do. They deceive themselves so bad. Let me check something right quick, y'all. I want to make sure that I am still recording. Okay. Give me just a second. Okay. I am. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. So, verse number uh, what was we at? Um, verse number three. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. How many times have you ran up on some people in your family and they kept putting you down? They had a high class mentality. They had a big egotistic mentality, but you looked at how they live. You know them. A good example of this is on Facebook. You see people all the time putting out how glorious their lives are on Facebook. And sometimes you see them that come through with the, come through with the truth. But then you see some of them who, who just, you know who they really are. So you know all that stuff, how they're trying to make it look good. You know that's not true. That's not really what's going on in their household. So those are the deceivers. Those are the ones that are deceiving themselves. Those are the ones that are... You know, if anyone thinks they are something, when they are not, they deceive themselves. Those are the ones that's playing the Joneses role, the ones that's pretending to be. They got a form of godliness, but they aren't godly. You got to watch out for them people. Back to verse 1, watch out, all right? Okay, now back to 4. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. How many times have you just compared yourself to your brother, to your sister? And I'm talking about your blood brothers and sisters. Well, mama do this for them all the time. Mama do that for them. Mama don't do nothing for me. Well, it's because you are comparing yourself to what they are doing and you're not focusing on what God is doing in your life. It may be that they need the more help. You may not be the one that's really in trouble like they are. God knows who who, who you are. He knows your identity. He wants you to know your identity. He wants you to understand that this situation ain't for you. There's a reason why people are taking care of certain people because they they are to do that. But you have to realize that when you get jealous because of what your friends have, because of what your neighbors have, you lose the whole sight. You lose your whole sight of boundaries. You're going to have to set some boundaries in your life that say, you know what? When I feel myself getting to the point of jealousy, I'm just going to look back at my house and thank God for the things that I do have. I'm going to start looking back over my resume and see if there's something else that I can do to be better to help the world, to be better to help the next person. You know, stop comparing yourselves. You don't have to do that. Take pride in the things that God has already given you. Verse 5, for each one should carry their own load. At the end of the day, when all is said and done, and we have to go before judgment, we are responsible for our own sins. We are responsible for carrying our own load, which is our burdens. We are responsible for giving them to the Lord. We're responsible for resisting temptation. We're responsible for fixing what we can fix 
and asking God to help us while doing it. We are responsible for us.